I'm having the weirdest case of deja vu. I don't know anybody named Alejandro, but I wish I did. I agree. Like, there's nothing that I hate more than A, large parties, and B, surprises. If you want a box of books published prior to your birth, just get them on eBay. I may have had some incorrect assumptions about James Patterson. Oh, geez. This is, this is amazing. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another mystery box of books unboxing for you. And I'm not going to pick it up again because it's incredibly heavy, but you should have seen a picture of the box in the thumbnail. <laughs> and this is a little bit different. It's not a true, true unboxing because this shipment had sat out in the rain for a little bit. So as soon as I brought it into my house, I opened it up to make sure that there was no damage, nothing I needed to dry out before doing this video. Upon which I realized that I don't think I received what I ordered. I'm pretty sure that I ordered from eBay two lots of 10 trade paperback mystery thrillers. And when I opened the box just to make sure everything was dry, I didn't go all the way through it. Um, there's a lot of mass market paperbacks in here. I'm not sure what that is about. But it is what it is. I mean, it's a mystery box of books. So, of course, it couldn't be at all what I would expect, right? I've done three other mystery box unboxings here on this channel. One other one from eBay. They're always a super fun ride. I don't expect any less from this video. So let's get started and see what is inside the box. Uh, first out of the box is a novel by Iris Johansson. This is the book Quinn. Um, have I ever gotten an Iris Johansson book before? It doesn't necessarily feel like I have, but immediately on the back it says, don't miss the first and final novels in this series. So if you've watched my other unboxings, you know what a pet peeve it is to be sent the middle of a series. This looks like it's book 13 out of 25 in the Eve Dallas mystery thriller series by the author Eve Dallas being a really famous protagonist uh, in the genre. This one is about a Navy SEAL Joe Quinn who has seen the face of evil. Oh, he falls in love with Eve Dallas. What? Eve's first love, John Gallo, a soldier supposedly killed in the line of duty is very much alive and very much a threat. Am I sleeping on this series? Do I need to just read book 13? Because this sounds like dramatic yummy goodness. I'm not going to lie. Okay, next is a book by T. Jefferson Parker, who I'm unfamiliar with. The book is called Silent Joe. It says Edgar Award nominee for best novel. It is. It looks like it is a standalone. This moody, sexy, suspenseful mystery proves yet again why a T. Jefferson Parker novel is impossible to resist or to put down. Okay, so basically this is about um, a guy who was adopted by a politician uh, and when his adoptive father dies or is murdered, is murdered, Joe decides to solve that mystery, figure out who killed his adoptive father. But what he actually ends up uncovering is how many secrets his father possessed and that his father may or may not have been a bad man. I mean, that sounds interesting. Two that sound interesting. One, I'm unlikely to read because it's the middle of the series. Let's keep going. What? This is a book by Vivian Connolly. It's called Five Ports to Danger. This looks like a crime court mystery, whatever that means. It looks like a, it's a real thin, looks like a cereal. In the tradition of Miss Marple, we know who Miss Marple is, the crusty, keen-witted Kathleen O'Connell, say that seven times fast, crusty, keen-witted Kathleen O'Connell, faces her toughest challenge to date. The redoubtable Aunt Kathleen has signed on for a Caribbean cruise to get away from it all. On board, she befriended a beautiful Spanish girl, an American writer, a mysterious priest, and a notorious smuggler. Kathleen. 
But the pleasure boat turned into a ship of fear when one of the passengers turned killer. It was up to Aunt Kathleen to solve the murders to save her friends' lives and her own. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It sounds kind of good. I, I would assume this is kind of like a cozy mystery, which I never, ever read, but... You know, that sounds kind of cute. The other thing to note is that so far the books in this box don't stink. Like, literally smell. And we know how familiar I am with this guy appearing in mystery boxes. This is John Grisham. The book is The Confession. I don't think I've received a copy of The Confession. Wow. I've never even heard of this particular John Grisham novel, but... It's about a man who, who it's about a man who uh, abducted, raped, and strangled a popular high school cheerleader in 1998, and then watched the police arrest and convict another person. And so nine years pass, and the killer Travis is paroled for another crime that he committed. Finds out he has a brain tumor, and the guy that was arrested for his crime is four days away from being executed. It says a guilty man needs to convince lawyers, judges, and politicians that they're about to execute an innocent man. This actually, <laughs> again, this sounds interesting. Maybe it's just the mood that I'm in. Maybe this mystery box caught me on a really good day. I'm not sure, but I don't think it's going to stay that way. Lord have mercy. One of the weirder judgments that I make about books is that if there is a full page author photo on the back cover, I'm not going to say it's not good, but it's, it's a turnoff. It's a turnoff for me if there is a full page author photo on the back cover. Uh, this is Dick Francis, apparently. I don't know who that is. Uh, the book is called Smokescreen. It's got a racehorse on the cover. Uh, Edward Lincoln may be a worldwide superstar who plays daring detectives on the big screen, but in reality, he's just an ordinary man. Unfortunately, his ailing friend doesn't seem to think so, and now he's come to South Africa to investigate who's been tampering with her racehorses. I'm having the weirdest case of deja vu. I feel like just recently I was listening to something or talking about a story that had to do with South African racehorses. I'm not at all interested in this. <laughs> I mean, I'm just you know, not. I don't recognize the author, which is probably shameful. Uh, copyrighted in 1972, which is another reason. Oh, look, we have another Dick Francis and it has a racehorse on the cover. Oh, oh, oh okay. Dick Francis has a nickname. Uh, it says New York Times bestselling author Dick Francis, master of crime fiction and equine thrills. Like he makes it a habit of writing horse stories, apparently. A uh, black sheep of a prominent family, Alexander is content to paint pictures and play the bagpipes. But the artist's life is interrupted by a savage, mysterious beating and a sudden call from his near bankrupt family asking for his help. Now Alexander is trying to keep several family treasures from harm, including a steeplechaser called Golden Malt, and feeling a desperate need to brush up his skills in the art of detection. I love reading the synopses of books that I've never heard of, because chances are there's something in there, especially in the mystery thriller genre, there's, there should be something in there that totally catches you off guard, like that one. Good heavens! Seriously? Dick Francis, Bloodsport. Does this one have a horse? No. What's this about? When English agent Gene Hawkins told his boss he'd forego his vacation to search for millionaire Dave Teller's prized misting stallion, he didn't know his retainer would include the attention of his boss's beautiful teenage daughter or Teller's seldom sober wife. Do any of you like horses? Do you like horses? Do you like reading books about horses? I would be willing to send you all of these horse books free of charge. This has got to be the oldest thing I own officially. Actually, no, it's, it's 1972. Um, the first Mrs. Winston by Ray Foley, a novel of danger and romance. Connie Winston's honeymoon ended almost before it began as her bridegroom carried her over the threshold of their cottage. The lights flashed on and a welcoming party shouted congratulations. 
That was the first wrong note in a swelling crescendo of terror. I agree. Like, there's nothing that I hate more than A, large parties, and B, surprises. So, yes, a surprise party, for me, definitely the first wrong note in a swelling crescendo of terror. Definitely on my list of things that are terrifying. During that confusing evening, Connie heard the first disquieting rumors about her husband. By late night, as he drunkenly tried to embrace her, Connie already was wondering. Connie already was wondering. Shouldn't it be Connie was already wondering? What had happened to the handsome, brilliant man she had married, and who was this stranger with hate in his eyes and the threat of death in his hands? I have another Ray Foley book. Trust a woman? It's a question. Trust a woman? Uh, and these are the two covers. And I feel as though it's the same woman captured in photograph at different times. But they both look lost. Completely lost. What is uh, Trust a Woman about? Holly Niven felt as if she were stepping into an enchanted wonderland when she accepted a post as companion to famous beauty Millicent Goddant. Millicent was married to a powerful business tycoon. Her Manhattan mansion was a showplace of jet set society and no expense was spared to satisfy her most extravagant whims. All this was Holly's to share and enjoy until Holly discovered that danger was part of the bargain as breathless romance turned to screaming fear and death was everywhere. This sucker sounds like it goes from like zero to 60 in no time. Huh? Okay. All right. This is a pretty famous book. I've never read it. This mass market paperback is old, but it looks to be in really great condition. Like the, the binding is unbroken. This I think was something that I was considering for espionage thriller in my genre project. So it might not be a terrible thing that I have a copy now, but it is a uh, Tinker Tailor soldier spy. This is by John le Carre. He is one of them, a double agent who's burrowed his way up to the highest level of British intelligence. His treacherous collaboration with Moscow Center has already blown some of the best covers and wasted some of the best agents in English spy network. And he's one of them. But which one? So, like I said, it's pretty famous. I think I, I was taking it into consideration for my genre project. So, there's that. If you want a box of books published prior to your birth... Just get them on eBay. Uh, this is She Came Back by Patricia Wentworth, a Miss Silver mystery, a superb mystery in the great British tradition. Uh, and Jocelyn came back from the dead. Her husband, Philip, says he carried her off the beach, shot in the head by a German bullet, and he buried her in Holt Churchyard. Now with the war almost over, the bombing stopped. Her her return explodes the quiet life at Jocelyn's Holt. She wants her husband and her fortune back. This is a mystery? If she really, if she is really Anne Jocelyn. Miss Nellie Collins knows something about that. And now Nellie Collins is dead. What? Look at that cover. This looks like a children's book. Um, Captain Bolton's Corpse by J.G. Jeffries. Jeremy Sturrock of the Bow Street Gang toes the line for his dull-witted and wretched companions as they fish for answers. The squalid haunts and sewers of 19th century England become more dangerous every minute in this wild land and sea adventure. That's not helpful at all. No idea what this book is about. It's really short. I wonder if it's even a standalone. Uh, it kind of feels like I should know who these people are being mentioned, but I do not. All right, here's something that was probably published after I was born. Yes, 2001. Okay. Uh, it is Kay Hooper's book, Touching Evil. This is about a sketch artist named Maggie Barnes, who is so good at her job that some people think that she's telepathic. Well, apparently why she's so good is some secret that she keeps. But Seattle is seized by a madman who abducts women and blinds them. So she's going to have to sketch a man who's blinding his victims. That seems difficult. Ugh, it's a book four of 20. A Bishop Special Crimes Unit novel. 
there's nothing on here that says bishop. Like, nothing in the synopsis references a place or a person named bishop. Super confused. You have to pay $47 for the trilogy. A Bishop Special Crimes Unit series. Here it is. Why would why would somebody list it for forty seven dollars? The mass market paperback is on Amazon for a dollar eighteen. I'm interested, but not it's this middle book in a series. You know how I feel about that. Richard A. Clark, Breakpoint. It has a picture of the Pentagon on the front. A decade after 9-11, crucial routers sit in unprotected buildings exposed to attack by anyone wanting to disrupt worldwide internet traffic. And that is exactly what happens one March morning. Ten truck bombs explode in five states, and one by one, the lights on the National Communications System's big board start blinking red. This sounds like a good, I mean, techno, techno thriller. That's on my genre... I mean, those aren't hard to come by, uh, necessarily, but I don't know who Richard A. Clark is. It says it's fast-paced and fascinating, and it's real terror. I don't, I don't know if I f would feel that. I have two James Patterson novels. The first is I, Michael Bennett, but this also has a co-author, or so does this. James Patterson, The Jester, Andrew Gross. I don't know what that's about. What does that mean? Does that mean that he thought of the idea and somebody else wrote it? Or, okay, what? Totally unexpected. It says, returning home from the Crusades, a disillusioned Hugh discovers that his village has been ransacked and his wife abducted by relic-seeking knights. A situation that prompts him to pose as a court jester in order to infiltrate the castle where his wife is imprisoned. I may have had some incorrect assumptions about James Patterson. So this is a historical thriller, I guess. What? I'm not even sure what to say. I'll just set that right there. And then I, Michael Bennett. This is a series. This is from a series of books featuring the character Michael Bennett. This is book five out of 13. It says Michael Bennett may be James Patterson's greatest detective ever, but I'm not reading four books to find out. Uh, someone else I've never heard of. This is Perry O'Shaughnessy. The book is Acts of Malice, 1999. It's about a woman who lives in Lake Tahoe who runs her own law practice and is also a single mother to a teenage son. And she takes on a client who's accused of murdering his own brother on the ski slopes of Tahoe. So legal thriller. Um, I've got those coming out of my ears at this point. You guys would have to tell me something promising or I would have to like look it up on Amazon and Goodreads to see what other people are saying. Lisa Jackson, Beverly Barton, and Wendy Corsi Straub, most likely to die. A killer who gets away with murder once finds it easier to kill again. It's been 20 years since the night Jake Marcotte was brutally murdered at St. Elizabeth High School. It's a night that shattered the lives of three people. I'm not reading their names. A 20-year reunion has been scheduled. For some alumni, very special invitations have been sent. These three women have been marked for death. Why are there three authors for that? I'm not... I don't have a good reason. I'm just not interested. I have a book by someone called Brenda Joyce. This is called Double Take. It says, They were two of a kind until murder set them apart. Kate London has been estranged from her twin sister for years. She has never understood why and has always regretted it. When her phone rings in the middle of the night, Kate learns that Lana desperately needs her help. All Kate has to do is take her place for two days at her home in the horse country of Virginia. Come to find out, like, her sister has connections with this crazy, scary, seductive guy and also a stalker. And so now Kate is, you know, the victim. A tense romantic suspense that is filled with twists and keeps the tension at high levels. I know somebody who has to read some... No, I don't. Yes, I do. Have I posted that video yet? I have. I know somebody who has to read uh, Romantic Suspense in the month of October. I'm just not sure this is dark enough for what I'm looking for. It also, weirdly, kind of sounds like a book idea I had once. Oh, geez. This is, this is amazing. Patricia Wentworth's uh, book... Run! 
Lost on a foggy country road, James enters an old dark house to get help but finds trouble. First comes a frightened woman urging him to flee. Next, someone starts shooting at them. Later, someone says she is after her late aunt's diamonds and ruthless relations are after her. But apparently Patricia Wentworth is the grand master of mystery. I'm unfamiliar with this author, but she's the grand master. Nailbiter. A home repair is homicide mystery. There's a series of books called Home Repair is Homicide. Uh, this is by Sarah Graves. Anyone who can mix slaughter and screwdrivers is a genius. That's from the Boston Herald. They set the bar low. Buying a beachfront fixer upper in Maine seemed like a good idea to Jake and her best friend, Ellie. So we've got a female protagonist named Jake. That's not confusing at all. Uh, but working double time as landladies to a coven of wannabe witches isn't what they had in mind. And it only gets worse when Jake is called out one stormy night to make a repair and stumbles on a dead body. Now she and Ellie are racing to find a missing girl whose sudden disappearance may hold the answer or lead them to a killer with the final nails to their coffins. I'm sure it's lovely. Robert Ludlum, The Matteries Circle. That's the back. That's the front. That's the back. That's the front. That's the back. That's the front. America's Runaway Bestseller. Okay, great. Where's, where do you, where are you going to tell me what it's about? You're not going to tell me what this book is about? Shut up. I'm not looking it up. I'm just going to throw you in the garbage. There's nothing on here that tells me what this book is about. Nothing in the front, nothing in the back. There's one quote in the front from Book of the Month Club News. I'm not sure it's the same Book of the Month Club. Calm down. Uh, America's top suspense novelist takes on two supreme challenges. Depict convincingly a pair of geniuses and to confront them with a seemingly impossible task. That's revealing. Uh, but they are going to have to save the Western civilization from chaos. Apparently roller coaster of a book for some killers. Murder is just the beginning Birdman by Mo Hader originally purchased at Kmart, apparently with a money back guarantee riveting, eerie and tense, a frightening book. I'm intrigued. I mean, this is the most promising cover of anything that I've pulled out of the box thus far. It says, some crimes shock, some crimes horrify, and some defy the imagination. Detective Jack Caffrey can stare down hardened criminals, but can't say goodbye to the woman he no longer loves. Still haunted by the decades old murder of his brother, he slips easily into the case of five mutilated women whose corpses yield a treasure trove of abominations, including the little present found inside their bodies. Oh, I'm reading this. I'm reading that. I mean, it's called Birdman. It's probably a bird or something. Uh, Vince Flynn, Order to Kill, a Mitch Rep novel by Kylie Mills. This is not by Vince Flynn. Can you explain that to me? At least the photos on the back are getting smaller now. This is <clears throat> Order to Kill by Vince Flynn. And this is The Emperor's Revenge by Clive Cussler and Boyd Morrison. This is a clearly about racing. This looks like it takes place in Pakistan, in Moscow. This is espionage. This is when the corporation's offshore account is wiped out. Juan Cabrillo and the crew of the Oregon. Okay, these are not, and neither one of them is a standalone or at least the introduction to a series. Both of them sound like they sit somewhere in the middle of some series. See, this is why I wanted to order trade paperbacks and not mass market paperbacks. Because there's only a certain kind of book that is, you know, driven into the mass market paperback format. Those tend to be highly commercialized and they're plentiful and bountiful. So, of course, when you order a mystery box of books that are mass market paperback, you're going to get your your Pattersons and your, you know, it just and this guy. Legal thriller and this guy, espionage thriller and this. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know this guy. Richard Price, 
Clockers, the explosive national bestseller. A street smart teenage clocker on the rise, a dealer with a conscience, an ulcer, and a secret that could kill him. A burnout cop who's seen it all and had enough. A homicide detective whose blind obsession for justice threatens to destroy the wrong man. The cat and mouse chase between the two men, deliberate plotting Rocco and jittery strike, gives focus to this talented author's dark vision of American life. I'm intrigued. I'm not going to lie. I need to know more about it. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's never been read. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, I have a trade paperback. It's freaking James Patterson. <sighs> Revenge. First time in print. I'm so lucky. Is this a brand new book? It says cover design. 2020. What is happening right now? First North American edition, April 2020. Originally published in the United Kingdom, August 2018. Well, look at that. A brand new book in my mystery box. Must be my birthday. What's it about? <clears throat> Former SAS soldier. I don't even know what that means. I'm not sure. Former SAS soldier David Shelley was part of the most co covert operations team on the Special For Forces. Now settling down to civilian life in London, he has plans for a safer and more stable existence. But the shocking death of a young woman Shelley once helped to protect puts those plans on hold. The police rule the death a suicide, but the grieving parents can't accept that their beloved Emma would take her own life. They need to find out what really happened, so they turn to their former bodyguard, Shelley, for help. When they discover that Emma had fallen into a dark and seedy world, her father demands retribution, but his desire for revenge will make enemies that even Shelley may not be able to protect them from and take them into a war from which there may be no escape. Uh, this sounds interesting. I feel a little bit like a jerk now because this sounds interesting to me now i do have some um lord i do have some hard covers this is another one that appears in the mystery boxes all the time dan brown this is huge this is a heavy i think i have the whole series now i think in the mystery boxes i have received the entire <laughs> I don't know. I've received three books. I don't really know how many there are, but Robert Langdon. Robert Langdon is the protagonist in all of Dan Brown books, apparently. The Robert Langdon series by Dan Brown is a collection of seven books. Oh, and this is book five of five. What? The last book is called Origins book two of five. Okay. So it looks like we have officially, uh, angels and demons, which I have a copy of the Da Vinci code, which I've also received a copy of what I'm missing is digital fortress and inferno. No wait, inferno and the lost symbol. Okay. I'm missing the lost symbol and inferno. Otherwise I have book one, two, and five in this Dan Brown series featuring Robert Langdon. It's a little dusty, but it's a beautiful hardcover. But you know what? There's no picture of Dan Brown on the back. So I'm going to give this to my grandpa. He's 92 and he likes to read and he doesn't really care. You know, I'm not going to say he doesn't care what he reads, but he doesn't care about series and, and stuff like that. He just likes to read before bed every night. And so a lot of the times these mystery boxes uh, will go to him. The Burden of Proof by Scott Turow. I have another of his books. I believe it's Presumed Innocent. Late One Spring Afternoon. Alejandro, the leading defense. I just like saying that name. I don't know anybody named Alejandro, but I wish I did. Uh, the leading defense attorney in the mid-sized Midwestern city where he lives comes home from a business trip to find that Clara, his wife of 30 years, has committed suicide. Oh, no. Oh, damn. I think I may have read too much. Okay, so Alejandro, it turns out, was featured in Presumed Innocent or was a character in Presumed Innocent. I feel like it kind of spoiled me a little bit on Presumed Innocent. Maybe not. Maybe not. We're going to play Name That Author. Uh, I I'm going to keep buying mystery boxes of books. Sure. But I'm going to stop pointing out these author 
um, photographs, whatever, on the backs of books. I'm just going to collect them quietly and privately. And then one day I'm going to make a video where I'm just going to show you the picture and you guys are going to have to guess who it is. And the person who gets the most correct will win something amazing. I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> that's what's going to happen someday. So pay attention. Uh, John Sanford, Mad River, a Virgil Flowers novel. Sounds like the middle of a series. Jimmy Sharp, Becky Welsh, Tom McCall. They were Bonnie and Clyde. And what's his name? The sidekick. Three teenagers with dead-end lives and chips on their shoulders and guns. The first person they killed was a girl during a robbery. The second was a man whose car they needed. The third and fourth, well, those were personal. And why not keep going? Investigator Virgil Flowers joins the growing army of cops trying to run them down, but something doesn't feel quite right to him about the whole thing. Virgil just hopes he can figure out what. Oh, this really sounds interesting. I don't know why I sound so surprised. It's sad that that is surprising to me. Wow, I think I might like this book that I bought. <laughs> and another James Patterson, The Big Bad Wolf. Alex Cross battles most ruthless and powerful killer he has ever encountered. This is book nine of 28 in the Alex Cross series of books. It's, uh, it looks like he's trying to solve the cases, uh, you know, he's with the FBI. And so he's working these cases of all of these men and women getting abducted and then disappearing and never, never reappearing all across the United States. Interesting that these three books were kept for last. Oh gosh. And each of them has a picture, a different picture. Same author, Patricia Cornwell. At risk, point of origin, unnatural exposure. Um, point of origin and unnatural exposure appear to be K. Scarpetta novels. You guys have, in the past, mystery boxes told me how much you like K. Scarpetta as a, as a protagonist. This one, I think, might be a standalone. A Massachusetts state investigator is called home from Knoxville, Tennessee, where he is completing a course at the National Forensics Academy. His boss, the district attorney, an attractive but hard-charging woman, is planning to run for governor. In particular, she's been looking for a way to employ some cutting-edge DNA technology, and she thinks she's found it in a 20-year-old murder in Tennessee. Um, for years, Patricia Cornwell has demonstrated her extraordinary ability, but what she does with those ingredients in this book is a revelation. Again, that's at risk. Just to completely follow up, Point of Origin is book 9 of 24 for K. Scarpetta. Unnatural Exposure is book 8. I'm slowly, by the time this is all said and done, I'm going to end up with the entire K. Scarpetta series. All I have to do is keep buying mystery boxes of books. So how do I feel about this one? Well, I feel like I would have liked trade paperbacks a little bit better, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, these are fun. The way that I look at it now, now that I know that my grandpa really, you know, likes the kind of books that I keep getting in these, doesn't mind reading used and <laughs> gives them away to all of his friends that walk with him every morning. Like at, at this point, I feel like I'm, I'm paying $40 for 40 books for my grandpa. This particular box was not as bad as some in the past, but what do I have to do to not get the same authors over and over and over again? And again, it's those highly commercialized authors. They're, they're probably the most circulated mm -hmm. types of, of mystery thrillers out there. Is there anything promising? Yes. Things that I'm personally interested in that I would maybe read outside of the genre project would be The Confession by John Grisham. Again, this is the one with the criminal who's trying to confess and nobody's believing him. And then also Birdman by Mo Hader. This is the one that's about a killer leaving things inside the bodies of his victims. I mean, other than that, the box just, you know, gave me a copy of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, um, a brand new, at least in North America, James Patterson novel. So this wasn't dismal, 
but man. But it's such it's it's like gambling at the casino, right? I mean, you know you're not going to win big. But every once in a while, you get some sort of payoff that makes it worth it. Or you, you know, get the experience. I get the experience with you guys. You guys like these videos. I like cracking jokes. And, and it's the only time that I'm totally spontaneous that I... I mean, I never have any idea what I'm going to say. It all depends on what I read in a synopsis. I'm, I'm spontaneous. I'm throwing jokes out there, like to show off how funny I am. And, um, then there's the experience of giving them to my grandfather and my grandfather enjoying them and sharing them with his friends. So yeah, if you know some way, some other way that I can get mystery boxes of books, please share that with me because I don't want to get into a habit where I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again, which is kind of what it feels like to order from eBay a second time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got a kick out of my disappointment over some of these. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.